so I hope I can speak loudly and speak clearly. Um, I'm going to start by an apology and an explanation. And if I don't speak loudly, the people in the back um, tell me. Um, this talk um, had until a few hours ago a different title, and which was um, Einstein's Revolution, the Unfinished mm -hmm. Revolution. And, um, and that's the talk I thought I was going to give when I got on the plane yesterday to come here. Um, but in conversations with people today, um, I realized a couple of things. One of them is people were very complimentary about this audience. And I was told that this audience is some members of the public, but intelligent and sophisticated members of the public. And also academics coming from various fields, physics, but also philosophy, history, and so forth. Um, and so I thought maybe rather than giving what was a standard um, public talk, and you know, what are the big problems, what are the big ideas in physics, um, I would, with your permission, because I can go back to the other one, um, try out what I'm thinking about now on you. So, um, because this is a subject which is philosophical, um, indeed I'm aware that there are philosophers in the audience, for example, Steve Savage, uh, my host here, um, and in fact, it's in his domain of thought, which is the philosophy of time. And as I would like to explain to you, the issue of what time is, is, I've come to understand or believe, the crucial issue um, the nexus of which is why we don't yet have a complete theory of physics, that is a unification of quantum theory and general relativity together, as well as the unification with all the forces. Um, so, um, so if I have, and if I have your permission, um, I would like to talk about work and ideas and the thoughts which have not been talked about before, so you would be the first audience. So is that that okay? Nobody's going to go away thinking the jerk is you know, <laughs> not going to talk about Because I could give the other thoughts. Okay. Is that okay? I just, uh, speak now or forever hold you, please. <laughs> and of course, it's my risk more than, more than anybody else's. Okay. Um, so this talk is joint work, and it's work in progress with Roberto Mandevera Unger. Um, who is an interesting person that I'll say something about um, in a few minutes to introduce how the work got started. And these people, um, Stu Kaufman, Jeremy Lanier, Patricia Marino, Mark <coughs> Tullo, and Steve Weinstein, have all um, been very helpful and contributed. Some of this is their ideas, and some of it just mirrors things that I thought were their ideas, but they, they disclaim them. But I thought I heard from them. Um, Stu Kaufman is a theoretical biologist, people may know of, who recently moved to Calgary. Jeremy Lear is a computer scientist. Botini is a colleague um, in physics. And the others, Patricia and Steve, are philosophers. Okay, so I want to start with a story. And the story starts with a crisis, which there's been a lot of discussion of. And my last book, which Steve was kind enough to mention, was a provocation, was a deliberate attempt to intervene in this crisis. And this is um, what we call the crisis of the landscape. Roughly speaking, um, since the standard model of particle physics in 1973, there has not been a definitive advance in theoretical physics, a definitive further unification. Um, and some of us are very concerned about why that is. Um, the hopes that we had, and this talk is very much the kind, the talk of someone who is trying to understand what went wrong with their hopes that they had starting in college and graduate school. The hopes that we had was that there would be pretty quickly a further unification of all the different particle interactions into a grand unified theory, followed by a unification with gravity, and that that unification would be unique. And from that unique unification, we would be able to understand and predict 
first of all, all the unanswered things from particle physics as it was in the 1970s and still is. What are the masses of the different particles? What are the strengths of the different forces? And we'd be able to predict the results of future experiments, like the now upcoming experiments at the LHC. And there would be dramatic confirmation of the theory because you need this, because unification would be unique. And a unique unification would have to be right. Now, what's happened, more or less, in a nutshell, this is a talk by itself, um, is the reverse, that as there are proposals to unify the different forces in nature, for example, string theory, for example, quantum gravity, for example, others, um, and they all have the feature that the more unified they are, the less unique they appear. The more, when it comes down to how you make predictions, the properties of the elementary particles, the more unified they are, the less and less unique they are. And that's a problem, and that's the problem 